Hi everyone, I'm Abel, Product Specialist at Zeiss, and today we're going to run through our hardware tutorial and show you some of the key components. So first off, let's start with our CAM bar. So the CAM bar is essentially the eyes of the tracking system. And this is where the tracking data is initially captured. You'll see that we've got two wide stereoscopic uh, lenses on each end of the CAM bar. The two widest lenses are used for our tracking, whilst the two ones in the center are currently not used, but may be integrated into the software at a later point. The reason we use two lenses is because it allows us to accurately determine depth and distance. So why is this important? For the position of the film camera to be accurately tracked, the tracking system itself needs to know exactly where it is in relation to all of the points it's seeing. So if the camera bar knows where it is in a given space, that means the film camera can also be tracked in that space. So let's have a look at how the camera bar actually tracks. So we utilize what is known as inside out tracking, this is where the CAM bar is on the inside, looking outwards at points in its environment to determine its own location. So whether you're inside or outdoors, the same logic applies. So we have two methods of tracking. We have natural marker tracking and reflective marker tracking. When we talk about natural markers, we're talking about any points of contrast, edges and corners from static objects in your environment. For example, if we were in a studio like we are now, natural features would occur off the lighting rig, scaffolding, even this desk, edges of the desk or the pelly case would provide contrast points for the camera bar to track from. Bad examples of uh, natural features would be, of course, moving objects. So we always try to track static objects, anything moving in front of the camera, won't be tracked, but could cause hindrance to your overall tracking. Our second method of tracking is the use of reflective markers. You'll see on the camera bar that we have 10 built-in IR emitters. These will emit an infrared light into your environment. The markers that have been placed in your studio will then reflect that light back to the camera bar, which then allows the camera bar to determine its own location based off the position of those markers. The reflective markers look like this. They come in different sizes, depending on the size of your studio, and they can be easily placed on the studio ceiling, the walls, or even the floor. Another great feature of our camera bar is our ability to support digital markers. Digital markers can be imaged onto LED volumes, and we can track directly from the LED wall without using reflective or natural features. To be flexible in harsh lighting conditions, we provide two filters. We have the ND filter and the IR filter. Both can be mounted directly to the front of the camera bar. The ND filter, this blocks out all natural light and allows the camera bar to be fine-tuned for better performance, especially when outdoors. The IR filter, which is also mounted to the front, restricts any other light entering the camera bar and allows the camera bar to specifically identify the reflective markers. This is the origin, and this is where the SyncCraft Scenario software is run from. It's designed to be either mounted directly to the film camera or it can be stored and racked off camera where we can remotely access the software from a laptop or any other device that's on the same network as the origin. And this is our link component. As mentioned before, if you want to rack or store your origin off camera, you need to use the link component. The link component acts as a pass through and will send our tracking data from the camera bar back to our origin. And we will need a point-to-point -point ethernet connection, which is lockable from our link back to our origin. 
You would use the link component if you want to save space and weight on your overall camera rig. We have different bundles that can be configured on our website, so you can select which lens encoders and power cables you want to add to your configuration. But first, let's go through what we have here in our Peli case. And just as a note, these power connections that I'm about to show you can only be used with the link component as they're all powered directly from the camera body. When powering the Origin, it must always be used with the mains power supply. So first we have our XLR splitter. This can be used to power our link directly from the camera body. Next we have our two pin Limo. This also comes in three pin version as well. Again, directly from the body of the camera. Here we have our four pin high rows, which can be powered directly from the camera body as well. Here we have our elastic D-tap component. Again, this can be powered directly from the battery or from the camera body if it has that port. And finally, we have our last power connection, which is our mains power supply. This can power the link directly as well, but when we're powering the origin, it must only be used with this power supply. So now that we've had a look at our power cables, let's have a look at our encoder options. So first we have our XD cable, which will be used with all of our Zeiss lenses for our extended data. Next we have our Fujinon and Canon encoders. These can be plugged directly into a virtual port on a broadcast lens. We also support many follow focus systems. So we have separate encoders for different follow focus uh, setups. So whether you're using Tilter, Teradec, Preston, Cam and C-Motion, we have follow focus encoders that are easy to use and easy to set up. And finally, we have our passive external encoders, which can be mounted on our 15 mil and 19 mil rod clamps. They also come with four different pitch gears to fit almost any industry lens. Thanks for joining our hardware tutorial. We'll see you at the next one.